No, we gotta stay alert. One person gets through the net, and we have a problem. I'm on it. Just seems like a waste of time, that's all. Yeah, it kinda reminds me a little bit of Russia. Remember that place outside Volgograd? Man, that was cold. Then suddenly the whole thing went up in flames. Boom. Everybody was like, where the hell did that RPG come from? That's it. We lost, uh, that funny guy from, where was it, uh, Brazil? Yeah. What was his name? What, Felipe? Anyway, you make one slip up and suddenly everything goes haywire. That's affirmative. Assumption is the mother of all screw-ups, right? Can't take anything for granted, no matter how quiet things are now. The place is so deserted, though. I mean, you wonder who would actually want to live out here. Yeah, that's what we said in France, remember? We were based in that old monastery in the Pyrenees. Bored shitless when suddenly they come at us in these paragliders. It's like being in the movies or something. One of the guys on my team, uh, Brian, got his legs shot off. So we all chipped in for his uh, prosthesis, or however the fuck you say it, prosthesis. Now he's here somewhere out back. <laughs> There's no stopping old Brian. But it goes to show you that you can never be too careful in this line of work. Hey, nice threads, buddy. Sure. Can't have anyone nosing around. This is a sensitive operation. Well, you kind of wonder who the hell is going to come out here anyway. I don't know. It's always the quiet missions that suddenly go ballistic. I mean, think of that the Stockholm job. We're all told it's a walk in the park, and then... Well, you were there yourself, right? Oh, yeah, that time. That was just, uh... <laughs> that was just pure mayhem. Bullets flying everywhere, shit going crazy. You turn your back one second, and that's when everything gets fucked up. I hear you. Nobody comes and goes. Those are the orders. You know, it's so quiet, it would actually be kind of great to get a little target practice out there, if you know what I mean. Sure. It's kind of like that place in the mountains, the Czech Republic. Remember that? One moment, you're relaxing and taking a swim in a mountain stream. Next thing you know, you're in a crazy-ass firefight with 40 local mobsters. Man, they were riding like tractors. Yeah. How can I forget that? That was my first tour. Learned one important lesson that day. The moment you think you're in the clear, that's when the whole thing blows up in your face. Copy that. Let's keep this place airtight. I don't want to be the sucker who compromises the operation. I know, but I'm freezing my ass off here. I mean, we could barely find it, so who's gonna come around? I know what you mean, but we said the same thing in Laos in 2008, remember? The jungle camp with the big green snakes and the trees above us? Sure. It was me who took Emmett to that quack doctor who listened to the radio when he performed the operation. Said it helped him relax. Anyway, it's always nice and calm right before everything goes to shit. I know. This place is a no-go zone. Let's keep our eyes open, buddy. Who's gonna find this house anyway? I mean, this whole area is suffocating, right? They're shutting down the farms on the account of the economy. Nobody comes out here anymore. Can't help thinking about that other farm place, North Carolina. Can't remember the name. Some backwater shithole. Anyway, there was this group of Boy Scouts coming to sell lottery coupons. I mean, man, they were so sweet. Nobody could do what had to be done. Next thing you know, cops all over the place. Oh, yeah. I remember driving away in the Humvee and seeing everything going up in flames. It's always when you let your guard down that uh, they come at you, right? Hi, uh, whatever. Yeah, anyone comes around, you do what you gotta do, right? Yeah, but this place is so off the grid. I can't even get a signal on my cell phone. Yeah, but that's exactly when things go bananas. It's like that time in Cape Town. We were dropped off big shot banker and we're all wondering like why does this guy even need a security detail I guess we found out huh oh shit yeah that was something else I thought we handled that pretty well you know all things considered but hey you know you you look the other way one second and you have a problem 
That's it. The orders are clear. No one sets foot on the property and gets out alive. I'm ready for it. But I just can't imagine what kind of idiot would come out here and mess with us. I know, but for some reason I got a bad feeling about this place. We could be in for a surprise, you know? Remember that, that hydroelectric dam in El Salvador? It was supposed to be an easy pickup, no big deal. And suddenly, you have the freaking military police letting loose at you. I know. I know. I actually took a bullet in my left arm that day. Can't be too careful, huh? That's it. The boss was real clear about it, too. No visitors running a tight ship here. Yeah, but this is like Siberia or something, you know? Who the hell's gonna find us out here? I know. Remember that time in Nigeria? The oil fields? Shit, I didn't see that coming. Lost a lot of good guys that day. Do I remember? It was me and what's-his-name, Julio, taking care of the problem while you guys were packing up the gear. In the end, I ran out of ammo and had to use my fucking hunting knife. That was a real mess. Just when you think everything's hunky-dory, something like that has to happen, right? Yeah, the boss doesn't want trespassers around. It's not negotiable. Yeah, I guess this place was hustling and bustling once. Now it's like a wasteland or something. Well, there's something about this place that makes me a little nervous. You know, it's almost too quiet. It's like, it's like Slovenia. Remember Slo Slovenia? Oh yeah, I remember that guy. Yeah, crawling on the ground. Looking for his fucking nose. It's always like that, you know? There's a clear blue sky, and then suddenly, all hell breaks loose. I asked Pavarti and Berg. They didn't have a clue either. So who the hell is this guy? Concerned citizen with a chip on his shoulder? With skills like that? Come on, man. The boss keeps his past close to his chest. Apart from Olivia Hall, the head of the cyber unit, I don't think anyone knows who it was before. Including Sean Rose. Suppose we're all thinking the same thing. He was one of them, right? How else could he know so much about the enemy? Only thing that makes sense. I wonder what they did to him. I mean, <laughs> we've all felt the rage one time or another. The boss didn't start this out of charity. The hate runs deep. We all have our reasons, mate. Don't need to know his. Yeah? What's your reason? I do what I'm paid to. Made my peace with that a long time ago. Still, pick the right side whenever I can afford to. Righteous money just... Just rest lighter in your pocket. I hear ya. I'm sorry, but that's not a possibility. The weather in Florida. I mean, there's a reason I left Tottenham, you know what I mean? Don't even get me started on the amusement parks. Oh, boy, do we have amusement parks. Okay. How about those alligators? I mean, I actually own a pair of boots made of alligator skin. But having those nasty suckers in my backyard? No, sir. It's just not my thing. Have you tried the apricots? That's just complete horseshit. There's a reason why all the celebs have their summer houses in Florida and not Tottenham, okay? I mean, these guys aren't dumb. Sure, sure, I see what you're saying. This place is rugged. But maybe there's some reward in that. I mean, to me, it's these juicy little apricots. I eat one, and I just forget everything. I should give you my apricot jam recipe. Seriously, ugh. Warms the soul. You feel just a little bit closer to home. You know what? I don't get you. I'm trying to tell you something. You keep bringing up apricots. As I told you, I'm from Florida, right? Not originally. I'm from Tottenham. But this cold is just not acceptable to us. Like a form of torture or something. Like the UN should look into it. Well... You get a lot of big snakes out in those swamps. That's what I'm hearing. At least they don't have any big snakes here. Just lovely, fresh apricots. Everyone loves apricots. Oh, shut up about these goddamn apricots! Are you even listening to me? 
Hey, easy. All, all I'm saying is that this is heaven. We got the best goddamn apricots here. And not to mention a lot of weapons. You get used to the weather after a while. Yeah, it's true this place is a bit cold and deserted, but maybe after some time you stop bitching about it and put on something warm, right? Listen, that's not gonna happen, I assure you. I'm from Florida. Not originally from Tottenham, but I mean, Florida's like a different world. We have 1,500 miles of white beaches. You think I'd move here and be miserable? No way. That's why I like it here. You just have all these lovely apricots. Lovely, juicy, no tornadoes and or lightning. That shit is dangerous, man. There are more lightning strikes in Florida than anywhere in the country, right? Oh, come on, man. You can't believe that nonsense. That's so stupid. And just, can you shut up about the apricots, okay? I don't like apricots. Well, I mean, I agree with you. The weather here is a bit rough. But, you know, I guess you get used to it. The air is really cool, crisp, perfect for apricots. I don't think so, buddy. Down in Florida, we have, like, sandy beaches, women in swimsuits. Yeah, it ain't Tottenham. You can't tell me it ain't the best state in the U.S. I mean, what, would you rather freeze your ass off in this godforsaken place? Well... I don't know that I want to be around old people all the time. By the way, have you tried the apricots? They are delicious. Anyway... What I mean about old people, from what I'm hearing in Florida, like, you know, one big old old people's home. Oh, please. Do you think millions of tourists from all over the world would come if that was true? Yeah, don't believe everything you hear, buddy. Besides, they got the best goddamn apricots in the world. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this place is kind of cold and unfriendly at the first glance, but looks can be deceptive. And I think, if you gave these apricots a try, you'll think differently. So I was thinking, you know, we should, uh, we should start our own fight club, you know? Meet up on the weekends, beat the shit out of each other, mano y mano, good old classic fun, huh? Girlfriends are welcome too, of course. Let the ladies have their own slugfest. What do you think? Interested? Seriously, what is wrong with you? Are you okay? Listen, if... Look, if you're high, just let me get in on some of that, huh? Come on, man. I want to be just as fucked as you. You know what? The second I started talking to you, I regretted it. You're always so freaking negative. Always angry and bitter. It's not my fault your life sucks and you're taking it out on me. Okay, okay. I think we got off on the wrong foot here. Let's just forget about it. I really don't need this aggravation. So we're done here. That's it. So, uh, I'm pretty much done with my apocalypse shelter now. Yeah, it, uh, has a five-year food reserve, a 50-inch LED TV, simulated outdoor view, air filtration system, uh, game room, you know, the works. Yeah, I've got pretty much everything down there. Me and the family are moving in soon. We, uh, we don't feel safe in the house no more, you know? So, uh, what do you think? How's it gonna end? Zombies? A new ice age? Alien attacks? Ah, uh, I figure, uh, global pandemic. Sorry, I wasn't really listening. Whenever you start talking, I'm like, yeah, yeah, just nod and smile, you know? I'm worried about you. You know what? Screw you! You're just afraid of the truth. I don't need this shit from you. I know I'm right. Uh, let's just all be friends, okay? Can I hug you? No? Okay, I, I get it. I respect the anger that you're carrying around. I respect the shit out of you. You know that, right? When you're ready, I've got a big old hug for you here, okay? So my standard bodyguard kit has this uh, tear gas spray, you know? And, uh, well, I use mine a couple of times, and they're really expensive to replace. So I started refilling it with my own blend of homemade hot sauce. So, uh, you being a great buddy, maybe I could just, uh, try it out on your face. It'll only last a couple hours, and you'll have full vision again in the morning. So what do you say? 
Can I spray your face? Seriously, what is wrong with you? Are you okay? Listen, if... Look, if you're high, just let me get in on some of that, huh? Come on, man. I want to be just as fucked as you. I don't even know why we are friends. You always treat me like shit. You're all like, uh, oh, I'm smarter than you. Uh, I went to high school. Fucking smart ass. That's what you are. Okay, okay, I think we got off on the wrong foot here. Let's just forget about it. I really don't need this aggravation. So we're done here. That's it. So, the boss hires his former Interpol agent to do strategic analysis for us. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty smooth. If you can be trusted, of course. Bit of a strange one. Not strange like Rose, mind you, but kind of, uh, aloof. I heard from the technicians that she's a Cambridge graduate, top of her class, things like that, you know? Join Interpol a few years after. Did you know that her main focus I was tracking Rose? <laughs> I mean, how poetic is that? Yeah. I don't know about poetry, but it sure is a twisted move by the boss. Then again, she was supposed to be the best, and the boss only hires the best. I guess we'll see if she can handle things on this side of the fence. If not, I'm sure Rose has some elaborate retirement plan ready for her. Yeah. Remember the first time my pop sat me on his lap and took me out on the old John Deere? Always thought I'd be a farmer like him one day, and uh, here I am. Eh? <laughs> Funny. My God, you really are a hick. Yeah, but to tell you the truth, I have mixed feelings about tractors. My old man got crushed under one. Sure, yeah. Flipped over and killed him. Happens a lot in the farm communities. Yet, I do think he died like a happy man. You know, on his own land, doing his own thing. What a way to go, huh? Man, you're like a country nerd or something. Yeah. Our oh, tractors is just a very special kind of vehicle, you know. Kind of like a, an elephant. I mean, if a vehicle was an animal, this would be the elephant, you know, strong and loyal and almost like serene. You can take the boy out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the boy, huh? Yeah, you know, these city people think they know what it's like to ride a tractor because they have one of those garden tractors. Oh, it's just sad, man. Maybe you should, like, launch a tractor fan site on the web or something. Well, when you grow up in the countryside, I guess you have a special relationship with a vehicle like that. City folks don't really understand what a tractor is all about. Hey, I, I didn't even know you grew up in the countryside. Yeah, man. One of the things I remember best was sometimes on a Sunday taking the tractor into town for some pickup. I could have gotten the pickup truck, but I just love riding through town in that powerful machine. Everybody looking at me like I'm not a boy anymore, but a man, you know, yeah. Good times, man. Good times. You got a special thing about tractors then, huh? Sure. I'm a big tractor buff. That is one fine piece of farm equipment right there. When I hang up my guns, I'm getting one of those 100%. Fascinating. You're a real hillbilly, huh? Yeah, you can't beat the feeling of going down the cornfields in a tractor with your big old dog in the cabin, listening to some great soft metal ballads. Oh, that is the life, man. man. Tractors just do it for you, right? Hey, you know when that guy Marcham is due back, the psychiatrist? I missed him the last time he was here. God, I need him now. Yeah. And you might too. Oh, and did you hear about that crazy shit that went down at Paris a while back? Oh, please tell. Yeah, apparently what happened was that this Serbian arms dealer was killed by a fallen statue in some fancy house in the countryside. Freak accident, right? Think again. The police are looking for this guy dressed as a butler. They're saying he may have pushed the statue, causing it to fall down on the dealer before vanishing into thin air. So, a lot of conspiracy stuff going on around the internet, obviously, but if you ask me, it was a hit. It was a, it has Russian mafia written all over it. But I guess we'll never know. Jesus, that is weird. Hey, that reminds me. I read something in the newspaper the other day. Really weird stuff. Oh, yeah. 
Tell me about it. So, apparently in Paris a while back, at some fashion show or something, there was this freak accident and over 70 people died. 70? You believe that? It was apparently due to a faulty electric cable near a puddle. But what freaks me out is, how can a puddle kill 70 people? That's insane. So it appeared that they're all lured to this electric puddle, drawn to it somehow, and then... <laughs> dead. Wow. That is insane. So here's something weird that I came across the other day. Oh yeah? What? Well, what happened was this. You know, according to this former Secret Service guy, I'm following him on the internet, some guy in this small Italian town apparently got blown like a hundred meters into the air before falling into the well in the town square, just outside the church. Local police are looking into it, or so they say. If you ask me, they should be looking at alien activity. The aliens have these tractor beams, you know? Sometimes it falls and people are dropped. Sometimes it fails and people are dropped from high in the sky. To avoid panic, the authorities cover it up with some bogus story about a bomb suddenly going off or something. I mean, please. <laughs> We're not stupid. That's pretty messed up. We're living in strange times. Also, I was watching the news the other day and there was this really messed up story. I mean, scary, scary stuff. Oh uh, yeah. Tell me about it. Well, this time in a small Italian seaside town. I read about it on the internet, too. So this one guy, this one crazy dude, just killed the whole town. I mean, can you imagine? So apparently he was wearing different disguises, like he was this freaking master of disguises. Some said he was Mossad, others a hired killer gone rogue. Hell, some say it never even happened, but that it was staged to cover up some hazardous environmental disaster. That is some crazy shit. Is everything okay? Nah, nothing. All right, but stay sharp. We don't know if they've latched on to our whereabouts. We'll do. See anything out of the ordinary? Nothing to report. Nothing whatsoever. Good work. Carry on. Understood. I'll see you around. Anything to report? Yeah, this place is dead. So dead you could hear a pin drop. Good to hear. Just stay alert. You never know. Copy that. Is everything clear? Nothing. This place is quieter than my mother's funeral. And believe me, we all hated my mother. I only turned up because I had to. You know, a son's respect, blah, blah, blah. Just stay on your toes. You never know when the shit hits the fan. Yeah, see you later. You, uh, see anything? Negative. Just me and myself. Thinking about a cold draft and some beer nuts or something. Good. Stay focused, okay? Yeah, I got you. Doing another round. Eh, uh, everything in order? Well, I got nothing. Apart from this big toad or something. That's like big as a freaking cat. Well, that's good work, soldier. All right, keep moving. All righty, I'm on it. Hey, sup? You uh, got anything over there? Nope, everything's fine and dandy. I'm starting to wonder if we're ever gonna get to shoot anything. That's what we want. See you in a bit. Cool, cool beans. See ya. You got anything to report? Nah, looks like a quiet beat. I'm a bit bored, actually. Good work. Keep your eyes open. Yeah, yeah, later. God damn it. I'm never gonna get this crap cleaned up. I warned, I warned him too. You put me in the back seat and this will happen. But did they listen? Of course not. Okay, I'm sorry, but when you put somebody who suffers from nausea caused by the motion of a car in the back of a car, then it's not a goddamn big mystery. You get vomit on the seat, okay? Wise up, asshole! My 
God, this crap is smelly. Jesus. I mean, I don't mind cleaning up blood or brain matter, but there's a half-digested taco right there. God, I don't even remember eating that. No, no, car sickness isn't a sign of weakness, you asshole. It's a medical condition. They have, like, professors and shit working on it, trying to cure it. Whoa, there! It's out there again! Damn! Whatever that is, it's, it's, it's bigger than a freaking cougar. Wow. Those big old sheep get pretty big. They probably come down from the Rockies to look for food. Seriously, this was something else. It had, like, a tail. It was walking on four legs, but the face... This, this, this may sound crazy, but it had human features. Listen, the perimeter's sealed off. There's no big creature is going under the radar, a man or beast, okay? Whoa, 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 whoa. there it is! There, that weird creature! What the hell is that? Listen, buddy, let me know if you've seen something relevant, okay? Don't give a rat's ass about local wildlife. No, no, but I'm serious. This looked more like a, a cross between a, a, a kangaroo and, and a scorpion or something. It was like, like something that had survived a nuclear meltdown. Uh, listen, doesn't matter what kind of freak it is, nothing's entering the compound without setting the alarm system off, okay? Well, that's, that's it again. Did you see that? Did you see it? I've never seen anything like that before. I, I grew up around here. Could be a bobcat. Did you know the Native Americans believed them to be spiritual messengers? Probably because they're such elusive creatures. I, I know how this may sound, but that thing, it, it looks like a horse with a monkey attached to its back. It, 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 but the monkey is facing backwards flapping at its long, hairy arms. Sure. But maybe you should lay off the ganja for a little while, all right? Oh! It's back! You see it? Holy crap, that is one big sucker! Yeah, yeah. So what is it this time? Bigfoot? Listen, I know, I know this sounds nuts, but that thing out there, it had four legs, but it, but it was crawling like a lizard, or like a, like a big snake. Relax, buddy. I'm sure if anything mysterious like that crossed into the property, the alarms would go off, okay? Mogadishu, huh? Hell of a baptism by fire, man. <laughs> You're telling me. I'm impressed. Of course, you don't hold a candle to Maya Parvati, the training director. Yeah, I was wondering about her. Indian? Sri Lankan. Get this. She used to be an assassin and gunrunner for the Tamil Tigers. Her father was one of their leaders. Then, when the Tigers disbanded in 09, Parvati took work as a freelance pirate in the South China Sea. For... guess who? None other than the Maelstrom. Ah, colorful. Yeah. And then, a grenade took her arm. That was the end of it. Happened during an attack on a Hampson oil freighter. How do you know that? I worked security on that freighter. I fired the shell. You did what? Jesus, does she know? Uh-huh. When I first got here, Parvati walked right up to me. You know what she said? Good shot. Right. Well, that settles it. I'm in love. So, I just found out that Parvati was a Tamil tiger. Those were some seriously hard people. I'm beginning to see how she got so rough around the edges. That's only half of it. She was raised by Mercs and was allegedly one of the best assassins in all of South Asia. After the Tigers disbanded, she went off to become a pirate. You're kidding? Nope. Ravaged the South China Sea with that Maelstrom pirate boss who hijacked a TI-class supertanker. Is that where she lost the arm? Crazy shit. Can you believe she lost that to a grenade fired by one of the guys here? Happened before the boss gathered us all up. Some raid on a Hampson oil freighter. <laughs> it's crazy shit. That's an awkward reunion right there, man. I still can't believe they're real. I mean, most people are amateurs and idiots. Can't keep a secret if their lives depend on it. 
How can something like this exist on the quiet? You keep it small enough so that everyone loses if the truth gets out. It's a club, not a corporation. These people don't need employees or armies. Only a hundred or so operatives who owe them their careers, their wealth, their power. So, what do we really know about them? We know they're a multinational shadow cabinet. We know they rule by influence, shape global events by inserting their proxies into the highest echelons of political and corporate power. We know each level has no knowledge of the one above. It's a dark tower, and we're chopping away at a base. Well, I was looking for a fight. So I guess I found one. The amount of freaks being brought into this camp has increased recently. Rose is on his own planet, but that new interrogation guy with the mask? What, Berg was it? What the hell's going on? You know what? I talked to him earlier over a smoke. He's a really nice guy. Really eloquent, soft-spoken. Used to work with Mossad as a chemical interrogation expert. Yeah, super creepy, more like it. Why the mask? Horrific scars? What? Well, that's for show, isn't it? Told me Mossad kicked him out because he'd started adding hypnosis and mind control to his bag of tricks. Apparently it all got a bit too much for them with the mask. Just there to support the terror he likes to instill in his subjects. It's all rather fascinating, really. Ah, almost blew his head off the first time I ran into him. Came out of that lab of his, you know, with that mask. I thought I'd come face to face with some backwater murderous cannibal type. Yeah, <laughs> guess it means the mask is working. Anyway, I'm happy he's on our side. Oh, I'd hate to be strapped to a chair, drugged to hell, and having to look at that mask while answering questions. Hell yeah, that would suck out loud. Hey, what's up? Looks a bit out of place, doesn't she? I mean, let's be honest, none of us are exactly God's finest. Takes a thief to catch a thief and all that. Penelope Graves? She seems like a straight arrow. Everyone's got their own reason to be here. Money, excitement, revenge, idealism. Graves is an analyst. She likes systems, patterns and order. She can't stand it that the system's broken. Patterns and order, huh, yeah. She and Rose have something in common. I hear she used to do profiling, catch serial killers. Then she became a counter-terror analyst for Interpol. Security's in the house. Day, trying to predict the next riot, the next terrorist attack. Yeah. What's her success rate? Scary good, actually. It's just a brass that never listened. Well, I like her. Nice to have a normal person around. So many arseholes in this place. We might reach critical mass and implode. Very true. So, you got your ex-military. Your mercenaries. I saw a couple of uh, cicada guys arrive earlier. Then there's freedom fighters, uh, intelligence specialists, cyber criminals, you name it. Half of these people probably fought each other at some point. Oh man, that's not even counting the really freaky ones. Like Left-wing terrorists like Sean Rose, corporate whatevers like Crest, and it's like the United Nations of assholes. Yeah. And what the hell is an anarcho-primitivist? You got me, and, and I don't want to know. Uh, this is a powder keg. How does the boss even hope to unite these freaks? Uh, the way he always does. Take them all, point them at a common foe. That's simple, huh? Well, I mean, armies are easy enough to deal with when the bullets are flying. It's all the shit that comes after that you gotta worry about. Peacetime when soldiers get bored, start getting ideas. I mean, that's when shit gets dangerous. <laughs> okay, Sun Tzu. Let's cross that bridge when we get to it, huh? Another thing that really, really bugs me is the lack of respect for the dead. I mean, we have, like, three generations buried here. I mean, my family are patriots, for Christ's sake. Always standing up for the red, white, and blue. It's a disgrace, I tell ya. They deserve a hell of a lot better. Yeah... But you can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs, right? Pops was a hard man, you know? I mean, he really told it like it was. He'd always say, Ain't no problem the Bible and a shotgun can't solve. <laughs> That's just the way he was, you know? How these people treat his house. It's messed up, man. They're lucky the old man's not around, I'll tell you. He'd kick their ass and take their frickin' names. Oh, I'm sure they're on our team. Anyway... 
Don't let it get to you. Okay? See you later. And, and look what they've done with the house. That's not right. If my old man had been alive, he'd run those dicks out in the street with a shotgun. Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. I mean, if it was my family house, I wouldn't be happy either. And my mom's grave. I mean, you can't even tell where the fucking place is anymore because they ran those big fucking Humvees over it. I mean, you kind of worry if these people are even real Christians, right? Well, I wouldn't doubt their commitment, if that's what you mean. Let's just talk later, okay? I'm telling you. Back in the day, my pops wouldn't even allow the mailman to come close to the house. He'd have to dump the letters by the roadside. And look at this place now. Crawling with all these outsiders. It just feels fucked up. Yeah, must hurt to see something like that. You can say what you want about my old man, but he was a straight shooter. I mean, okay, sure, he served time when we were kids, all right, but... But that's what happens if you stand up for your rights in this country. If, if he'd seen what these strangers had done to his property, he'd whip out a shotgun and blow their brains out. I wouldn't really say anything if I was you. The boss is not really receptive to critique, if you know what I mean. I'll see you later, man. Of course it is. Oh, it, it's good for a lot of things. Makes your bones strong and your eyesight more clear. You know, the pastor in my church sometimes comes by to eat this very dish. Great guy, by the way. Amazing how he stood tall against all those nasty accusations. Right? Anyway, how does it smell now? Yeah, it's good. It's very good, yeah. I sense the chili, but, um... Did you add more apricots, too? Horse patooties. Nobody takes you for a ride, huh, son? Don't tell anyone, by the way. These guys don't know that they've been eating apricot day and night for two weeks. And I'm afraid they won't really appreciate my focus on local products. Oh, sure, my lips are sealed. But is this stuff even healthy? Yes, it is. I'm glad you asked, boy. We have this old man in our congregation. He's a diabetic. Lost one of his legs last year, and now his eyesight's going to. But when I whip out a panful of this grub, he'll come running like a young buck. Hey, try, try smelling it now. Yeah, it's better, I guess. But are those bits of apricot peel I'm seeing floating around? Son of a nutcracker. I can't keep anything from you, huh? Maybe I'll add a bit of thyme and garlic. Apricot is such a delicate fruit, but it's powerful, too. It makes your brain younger and smarter. These guys, they just don't know what's good for them. Oh, don't worry about it. If they're unhappy, they can cook their own food, right? I just wonder if that recipe is, like, nutritious. Sure, I bet you. This is really healthy stuff. When we have the annual youth gathering of a church back home, I always cook this dish. What do you think? It smells good, huh? Yeah, I guess. It has that weird sweet scent, though. Did you, like, put all the apricots in there? Jeez, Louise, ain't no fooling you, huh? Maybe I should add more chili, then. Listen, don't tell the other guys, okay? I sense a little bit of discouragement running through the ranks on account of, well, on account of my apricot recipes. Just, let's just keep it between us, okay? Oh, don't worry. I'm not writing you out. But is that dish good for your body? Are you kidding me? No, this is like a remedy for the soul. Let me tell you this. When I serve this to the youngins after church service, they become so calm and happy, they forget everything about fornication cursing and illegal substances. Here, take a whiff. Wow, yeah, yeah, that's, that's not bad at all, yeah. But I'm definitely still sensing the apricot. It's like, uh, really intense and fruity. Good gravy. Can't sneak anything past you, huh? Maybe I should add a bit more tomato sauce. Anyway, let's keep the apricots on a need-to-know basis, okay? These guys are not food lovers. Yeah, that's fine. But is that stuff even good for you? 